You won't find too many sales at Neiman Marcus unless you're talking about the company itself. According to people with knowledge of the matter, Neiman Marcus is close to an agreement to be acquired by Aries Management and the Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board. Here to talk price strategy and the dyna dynamics excuse me, of the luxury industry, Mortimer Singer is CEO of retail consulting firm Marvin Traub Associates, and Joe Gromek is the former CEO of the Warnaker Group, whose brands included Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger, and the former CEO of Brooks Brothers. More, why don't we talk, start at least with you. Six billion dollars is... Chump what change. we're hearing Neiman Marcus might sell for, based on what you know about how much money they make, uh, and also comparable valuations. We just saw Saks sold not, not long ago. Does that sound like the right price? Well, it, that would end up being approximately a 10 times right. EBITDA, LTM right? EBITDA. And I think that you know, in, in the case of a luxury business, even though it is a retail business, so that is a, a quite a, a, a high multiple, but nonetheless not crazy. I think if you see what these guys would pay for it, if these guys in fact are buying, uh, uh, buying it, that if they continue at the rate of growth that the, that the company is growing today, 15% online, 8% uh, in stores, if they were to keep that pace, then you know, it would be a significantly good investment. But I think that might be tough to pull off. Joe, you want to weigh in? Sure. I think, uh, I think the real issue here is growth. And um, given the fact that you know, Neiman's with its uh, 41 stores and has grown stores really in a very conservative way over the, over the, I mean, the past decades, uh, the opportunity seems to be in incomparable store growth, which is a mixed bag. It can go up, it can go down, it's cyclical. So, you know, there, there are lots of issues there. And I think that's perhaps why they're pursuing this, uh, this new strategy as opposed to the IPO. Is there a level that maybe Neiman is too high end? Its sister store, Bergdorf Goodman, here in New York, many people consider a museum an iconic place, but is it a place that's cashing in right now? That, if you look at that, that store and then look, like at, and look, then look at, at Harrods, store. for example, <laughs> Harrods just sold for uh, 19 times EBITDA. But right, ha so Harrods is a little bit more of a well rounded store. I think that it is, uh, there are many corollaries. Bergdorf Goodman is one of the great names anywhere in retail, and I think it's a huge asset. And I think luxury is continuing to, to improve, particularly with luxury customers coming to America from yeah. overseas. There's something really interesting about luxury brands. They have a great runway for growth. They go global. You know, they go, they go multi-channel. So these are some of the, the, some of the obstacles, perhaps, for Neiman Marcus. Going glo global is going to be a challenge. Yes. It has been a challenge. They're involved to some degree with, uh, with, I guess, with e-commerce in China. But being able to take their brand and spread it around the world is not something that has been done but by d luxury department stores. But if that's the opportunity, why not go public? Neiman filed for an IPO back in June. The private equity companies that own it right now have decided that they want to pursue this parallel track of a sale, see if they can get what they want, if not, and then if not, IPO it. But at least if you IPO, you have a currency with which you, know, you can do secondary sales, you can raise some additional capital, and you can do that global expansion. You know, Neiman's is a very well-run company. You know, they, how are you going to grow this business? You want to grow the margins. Now, the margins are going to be tough. They're controlled by the brands. Their SG&A has been under control for years because of their private equity ownership, and they're, they're really great operators. Mm -hmm. So to improve on the operating side of the business is going to be challenging. So for me, it is a growth story, and to be able to convey that gro growth story to investors is, is uh, something that, that could be a challenge. But has their growth been stunted? You know, traditionally, Neiman didn't really have many competitors, but if you look at the net of tears now, people can get that kind of stuff online when five years ago, Neiman stood alone. But Neiman's is the king of omni-channel. I mean, they really have uh, industry-leading metrics and statistics around how they're growing their digital strategy plus omni-channel driving people into stores. They have opportunity and outlet. They, are, they have half the number of outlet stores as Saks. They may not want to go into the outlet business, but nonetheless, that's an opportunity and private label. There's lots of margin to be captured there so they can get back to the 2007 uh, gross margin numbers that they still haven't got back to. I'm surprised that some of the sovereign wealth funds have not jumped into this game because here you have a premier brand uh, that will grow profitably but in a, in a more modest kind of a fashion and those folks would love that premier property and I don't quite understand why and that, that was the Harrods story and that's, that, that's how Harrods continued to operate. No, absolutely. I think, it is, uh, they, I think they've probably been circling this pretty aggressively but uh, ultimately it comes down to price and what they can do. How good a trade can it possibly be if it goes from one private equity owner to another? 
Well, I think you look at interest rates today versus eight years ago and, and look at the rate of return. I don't want to get into, into Morty's area here of expertise, but I think that, you know, uh, they've got about $3 billion worth of debt on this business. Uh, they can, you know, generate $6 billion in a sale. They have about a billion and a half in. To me, making $3 billion on this thing is a, a two times return. But That's not shabby. Yeah, particularly when they invested in this business just before the Great Recession. So luxury fell off a cliff. Right. They actually made money and a, a decent return for their investors, uh, so it's now someone else's turn.